Well, let me throw this out there. Um, yeah. The possibility of interpreting mm -hmm. John prologue as, you know, part and parcel of the beginning of the ministry of Jesus. I, I understand that you take Logos in verse mm -hmm. one as mm -hmm. an impersonal entity, yes. but some, a very yes. uh, small minority of biblical Unitarians mm -hmm. look at this prologue as, you know, the, the word beginning refers to the beginning of the ministry yes. of Jesus. I've come across that. And when you look at uh, First John, it mm -hmm. seems to be saying the same thing. It seems to me it can be a plausible explanation, except mm -hmm. verse 14. These uh, biblical Unitarian fellows are saying that verse 14 is probably a reference to the resurrection. Okay. I've made the point of the gender change from verse 5 to verse 10 significant. The light is the light in verse 5. But in verse 10, it's deliberately a person. Certainly no reference to the resurrection here. I would, I would, I would dispute that. I, I see nothing to do with the resurrection. Where, where do you find the resurrection here? Well, it doesn't say resurrection, obviously, but no. it says we have seen his glory, glory as of the only son from yes. the father, full mm -hmm. of grace and truth. Yes, that's the, that's the historical Jesus, full of glory, grace and truth. In right. fact, grace and truth came by Jesus. We know that. The law was given by Moses. Grace and truth, that's not the resurrection. That is actually a dangerous thing for me. The whole attempt of the devil is to get rid of the historical Jesus for me. It's the verb there. Does it say the Christians who were born, not of sexual intercourse, but born of the Spirit, or is the verb singular? He, Jesus, who was, and it's very likely to be right, I think, because it's a very great fuss to say that your rebirth as a Christian was nothing to do with male and female. I mean, that's a bit labored. More likely, that's a reference to the coming into life of Jesus by virginal birth. Well attested. In fact, okay. Italian even says the Gnostics changed it, which is quite possible. Actually, the, the Spanish one, you might be interested, the Reina Valera 1995 mm -hmm. is actually the, where I found this information years ago, mm -hmm. and now it's gone. Anyway, this is a translation from mm -hmm. the footnote to the Reina Valera, and the and this is the book you got to get, by the way, Douglas mm -hmm. Edwards, The mm -hmm. Virgin Birth in History and Faith, and he reports that the earliest written witnesses to John 1.13 uh, show this reading, he is the Son of God, not by nature or human will, but because God has begotten him. And that harmonizes Antony mm -hmm. uh, excellently with... As 5.18 speaks, not in the King James, which is all garbled there, the son who was begotten, not a reference to Christians, but to Jesus, preserves the other Christians, not preserves himself. The Christian doesn't keep himself. The one who was begotten, i.e. supernaturally begotten Jesus, looks after and keeps the fellow believers. That's an important text, First John 5.18. How are we to mm. approach the prologue mm. in terms of sequence? Mm. Is it supposed to be chronological or topical or a combination mm. of those two? you know, combined with other, because when you read it, I don't think it's chronological. I mean, it's obviously not chronological, but there are certain verses such as one, two, and three, mm -hmm. that seems to me chronological. I, I, don't, I think you're right, but I, what I wouldn't do is start with the beginning of the ministry of Jesus. You're not suggesting that. I'm, I'm not gonna argue fiercely with anybody this, about this, but enachi in Logos, the first line, strongly suggests Genesis one. It's a new beginning for me, better than 1.14. The word became flesh. I don't think that's the beginning of the word there. It's easier to do 1.14 as the, as the becoming human of Jesus for me. So, so if, if you were to map it out, if you will, in, in a structure, yes. Anthony, yeah. where is the chronolo chronology here? Uh, which verses are to be taken chronologically? You know, verse one and then jump all the way to verse 14, bam. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. God became flesh. God, the, you know, second yes. person of Trinity. Without looking at, you know, explaining verses 2 all the way to 13. Yes. Well, I, I think, obviously, they're starting with the assumption that the God, the, the word there is the Son. So the mistake is to say, in the beginning was the Son, God the Son. They start with that presupposition, and we're against it. So right. why put a cap? So that's quite clear. I think the in the beginning there is a, is a reference to Genesis. It seems to me to take, take us back there. This is the new beginning, if you like. But when yeah. we get to 14, then the word becomes human. 
a human being. That's the place to start the life of Jesus. Although you can say that everything was made with Jesus in mind. That's fine. He's what the word became. Beginning was the word, I think, is a reference to Genesis. Okay. I, the reason for that is the comment is in First John, right? John has given his own comment on this. That which was from the beginning. Five times that which was from the beginning strongly suggests to me the same as this one in John 1. One, what was, right? Not he who. What was, what was, what was, three times, five times or so. And what was with the Father was the life, the word of life, the promise of immortality. That seems to me John's comment. And John is saying here in the, in the epistle, ah, if you thought I was talking about in the beginning was the Son, I think you've got it wrong. I didn't say that. I said the word and the promise of eternal life, the life of the age to come in verse 3 there, verse 2. That's what was with God in the beginning. That's exactly the way I'm understanding John 1.1. 1, 1. That word eventually then in 14 became embodied in Messiah Jesus. I, don't, I think that's the easiest way of doing it. He, it was in the beginning, is the natural way to go with that. The word was. Right. All things came to be through it, the word. And without right. that word, nothing came to be. That is very much, by the way, found at Qumran, a similar statement. The people at the Dead Sea Scrolls area were saying everything came into existence through the word and nothing came into existence without it. So now all of a sudden when you read verse 6, there was yes. a man sent from God. All yes. of a sudden John the Baptist is there? Yes, of course. Yeah. Why not? When you get to John the Baptist, he's the greatest man who ever lived. He's so right. great that he baptized Jesus. Beginning in verse 6, John mm -hmm. is already preaching. Yes. And then in verse 14, Jesus becomes... A human being. Oh, I see. Yeah, I think that's just resuming. I think I, I'm taking the 14th verse as a resumption of the older story. He goes to you. John the Baptist. Yes, I, I, I get your point. He goes to John the Baptist. And then in uh, verse, that's verse, what, six, a man named John was sent from God, commissioned. He came for a testimony as a, as a forerunner. We know that from Malachi. He was in the world and is going back to Jesus now.